Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we headed outside to test out and show you a technique that I use pretty often. The barrel ramp. It's super simple and really fun to implement. Let's first go through the shooting technique, and then later in the video, I'll touch on the editing part. Recently, I've been playing around with a cool transition that involves sort of like a rotating 360 roll effect. And that effect is achieved using a gimbal. A lot of times, these gimbals have a mode called the POV mode, where you can go in and twist and rotate sort of manually. So the POV mode is really cool. I use it in a lot of different scenarios, and it's where you can twist and roll, and you can do a lot of cool things with the gimbal. But for today's effect, we're gonna do a 360 roll effect, where essentially, I mean, you guys see in the video, but you're gonna twist continuously, and then you're gonna speed wrap between two clips, and that'll create this really cool whip vortex effect. The vortex effect essentially allows you to position your camera directly head on to your subject. And as you hold down the joystick, it'll allow you to continuously and smoothly rotate your camera. And as you keep this sort of centered on your subject, that'll help you create a really cool rotating effect. So this effect is split up into two shots. Both shots must go in the same general direction. So for this shot in particular, I'm gonna have Peace walk past me and I'm gonna walk past him. So he's gonna come towards me, I'm gonna walk past him. And in both these shots, you need to make sure you have the vortex mode selected and keep a pretty steady, slow, sort of rotating effect. We're gonna speed it up afterwards using a speed ramp. So, let me go ahead and get set up here. And on three, two, one, one, you're gonna start walking, okay? And three, two, one, go. Let's do it one more time. You can do a couple takes just to make sure you get the shot. Walk to my right this time, yeah. Go. All right. So the second shot of this series, you're gonna essentially have the exact same movement where I'm gonna continuously make sure, for instance, on this shot, I held down the right side of the joystick and I'm gonna continuously rotate until my final shot, my final framing, and that's where I'm gonna kinda of let go and try to finish with your framed shot. Sometimes I'll do two variations. I'll do one where I'm going in, and another one where I'll have the frame final shot and I'll kind of pull away on the opposite direction. Do whatever's easier for you. I do both, and then in the edit, you can go ahead and pick and choose which one works better, so. The great thing about this gimbal in particular is it has a sort of wrist hold, and these things kinda of get a little heavy, so you can change your, your orientation to whatever's easiest for you. So let's try it out. Three, two, one. When I say lower it, lower it and look the same way you came. So I'm gonna uh, go the opposite way, okay? Let me just frame it and lower it. So once you've captured your clips, you're gonna then head into your editing software. Today we're using Adobe Premiere Pro, but before that, I wanted to touch on the star of today's show, and that's the gimbal. And that's something that I use on almost every shoot. And today we use the Juin Crane 4, which they kindly provided for this video. There are a few key features that I wanted to highlight on this gimbal in particular that really helps me in my workflow, and it's something that I think it'll help a lot of people. In today's video, we primarily use the vortex mode, which allows you a 360 total roll feature, which is something that we'll use in this particular effect, but it also obviously has like the POV mode, which I use very often and the usual like follow modes. The two features that I really like about this gimbal in particular are A, this additional sort of wrist guard that comes with it. If you've ever used a gimbal for a prolonged period of time, you'll know, especially with like longer lenses or larger lenses, how heavy this setup gets over the course of a day if you have like a long shoot. This wrist guard that comes in the box is really handy and allows you to sort of allow your wrist to to rest and hold the weight of the gimbal. And this is something that is pretty rare in terms of like when you buy gimbals and they come prepackaged with this sort of stuff. Oftentimes you have to buy like third party accessories. This one comes with a wrist guard and it helps distribute the weight and it really helps save you sort of that that extra strain that'll accumulate over the course of a day. And it's one of my favorite features. The other really cool feature that this gimbal has in particular 
is it's got a light that's built into the gimbal itself. So the light's really easy to control and you can actually control the temperature, the Kelvin of the light. It's a small feature, but it's a really welcome feature, especially for solo filmmakers, people who have smaller crews. You don't necessarily always have someone who can hold the light for you or you just need the light from the same angle as the actual camera. This feature is really nice to have. When you want a small key light, something that'll illuminate the subject's face or their, their features, this light comes really handy. It's got this really nice silicone covering that'll diffuse a light and you can take this off if you want a little bit harsher light but overall it's a really nice feature and it's something that I really enjoy in this gimbal. If you're interested in checking out this gimbal there's a link in the description. Thanks again to Juin for providing me with the Crane 4. So the final step in bringing this transition together is going ahead and loading up your two clips into your software. Here we're in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I've already gone ahead and speed ramped the first clip and so as you can see I slow them down to about 50% right before I walk past piece here and then it speed ramps into the next clip and it's a little bit jumpy just because um, Premiere Pro sometimes just doesn't handle like over, what, 500% on the timeline. But just to watch the clip in its entirety, as you can tell, we have a consistent roll in the 360 feature and then it speed ramps into the next clip. Now, just to show you how to speed ramp, for instance, in Premiere Pro, what you want to do is you want to go to the particular location where you want to end the speed ramp. So let's say we want to end it right here. You're going to right click the clip, show clip keyframes, go to time remapping, make sure speed is selected. And then in the left here, you'll see these keyframes. These are speed ramping keyframes. You're going to click here and then to the left and right, you can adjust the actual speed. So what I like to do is I like to increase this to Let's try like five or 600%. And then you'll click and drag. And this allows you to adjust the actual ease in and ease out of the speed adjustment. So it'll go essentially from 500% all the way down to, I think we have this at 50, this is 100% right now. And it'll go from 500% to 100% wherever you decide. And then you'll go ahead and adjust these keyframes. I like to keep the speed about around like five, six, seven, eight frames. And then as I, as you clicked and dragged here, you can actually adjust the ease or the actual kind of like build into the speed ramping effect. And then what you'll do is you'll go ahead and crop in after that keyframe. And I feel like this allows you for the smoothest sort of speed ramp effect. So if you just watch it through here, you'll see we have a very smooth continuous roll into our next clip. So it speeds up here, and then the beginning of the next clip is also sped up and it slows down into your clip. What I have here on the adjustment layer above these two clips is something that I use very often. It's called RSMB. RSMB is a third party plugin that allows you to add motion blur in Premiere Pro because otherwise, if I wanted to add motion blur to this, I would have to manually go ahead and add either a Gaussian or some sort of blur between the two clips, keyframe that. You can do it. There are a lot of tutorials online on how to do that. It's not that hard. It's just really time consuming. RSMB is just like a plugin where you just add the motion blur and it'll add it for you. If you're using other editing software, then it's a little bit more streamlined. You can just like click motion blur, for instance, in After Effects. But for whatever reason, Premiere Pro doesn't have motion blur built in just yet. So this is a plugin I use and it makes speed ramping much more smooth. The actual, if you look at both raw clips, you'll just notice that they're continuously rotating around in a 360 movement, the same direction in both clips. That's the key. You'll then go ahead and take those clips, adjust the speed ramping in between. What I like to do is like to slow it down before it speeds up for the first clip. And the second clip is just sped up into and you'll slow it down to either 100 or 50% if you're shooting at like, let's say 60 frames per second, which I'm shooting on these two clips. So that wraps it up for today's barrel ramp tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. It's a super simple transition, but you can add it into your workflow and sometimes you'll get some really cool effects. Thanks for watching till the very end and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.